Okay, so in your groups, what did you decide standard temperature and pressure was, STP versus SATP? What did you decide? Tell me something. Uh, Pierce. Uh, the standard ambient is like room temperature, so it's like more basic, like more common. Good. Nolan, can you that's, add to that? That's what I was thinking. Can you add to it? Uh, Anything? Standard temperature is at zero, and then now it's at 25. Good. So they've changed the room temperature, 0 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, between standard temperature pressure and standard ambient temperature and pressure. What else did they change? The pressure. The pressure. Why do we even have STP and SATP? Different elements. Remember me saying so that you can compare results with a different place? Remember? Imagine a gas. That's at a really high pressure. So high of a pressure that that gas has become a liquid. That which does happen, right? It's like propane tanks with liquid propane in it. Right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm studying propane under a high pressure condition here, and you're studying propane under a low pressure condition over there, and I say propane's a liquid, and you say propane's a gas, we can't really compare our results, can we? Because they're done at different pressures. So in order to compare our results, boiling temperature, the melting temperature, we should have a standardized system. Hey, you do it at this pressure, I do it at that pressure, the same pressure, and then we, have, we can compare our results because we've controlled our variables. Does that make sense? It's essentially a set of rules about controlled variables. Standard temperature and pressure and standard ambient temperature and pressure. And almost everything we do in Chem 30 will be looking at results at SATP. So that those results are the same, like in the data booklet that you have is full of all these numbers, right? And all those numbers that you don't know of yet because they come in Chem 30 are all about standard ambient temperature and pressure. So that the numbers are the same whether it's a data booklet in Calgary or a data booklet in Germany or a data booklet in... Peru. Doesn't matter what the temperature is or the pressure is because they're all standardized. Does that make sense? Do you understand why we have them? Okay. So I want to, on that basis, talk to you about Avogadro's law. This is different than Avogadro's number. Yes, find a spot to write this down. It uh, won't be very, very good on the backs of your sheet. There is a little section about Avogadro's law in your guest booklet, but it's quite small. I'll find another spot. Also, I like new glasses. Junior class change. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Avogadro's law was named in honor of Avogadro. Okay. So it's different from the science ten Avogadro's number, where you did that whole six point oh two times to the power of twenty three molecules in a mole. Okay, it's different than that. Well, but it is based on the same kind of thoughts. Sorry. Okay, so Avogadro's law says, hey, let's take a balloon and let's fill that balloon with a gas, any gas, nitrogen, helium, ammonia, doesn't matter what gas. Okay, and that's a part of Avogadro's law, is this applies to any gas. And let's take exactly one mole of that gas. So I've just drawn three circles here, but in order to have exactly one mole, I would need six billion trillion circles drawn, which would take me generations to draw them, so I'm not going to draw them all. Do you understand? So one mole in this balloon, one mole of circles in this balloon. Ben, are you with me? Okay. So... And I'm going to have this balloon at STP. So what does that mean? My balloon's here, and what does STP mean? Tell me the certain temperature. So this balloon is at a room that's zero degrees Celsius. And what else? And 101.3 kilopascals of pressure. Everybody okay with that? So here's my balloon, certain pressure in my chamber, certain temperature in my chamber. I'm going to study this balloon. And in the balloon, I want six billion trillion circles in that balloon. Everybody get it? And no matter if I fill that balloon with six billion trillion helium, six billion trillion chlorine, six billion trillion 
air, a mixture. That balloon is always 22.4 liters of volume in that balloon. Every single time, no matter what gas. If it's at zero degrees Celsius and at 101.3 kilopascals, it ha will be 22.4 liters of gas in that balloon. Does that make sense? And I'm going to do the same experiment, only I'm going to change my chamber. So here is a new balloon. Pick a gas, any gas. Dawson. Nitrogen. Okay, so I'm going to fill it with nitrogen. And I want exactly one mole. So how many circles is that? Six times 10 to the power of 23 circles. Not just three. Are you okay with that? So six point, and really, to be more precise, I probably shouldn't call them circles. I should probably call them molecules. They're covalently bonded molecules. Okay, but this balloon I'm going to have in a chamber that has ATP. So what does that mean? What's my temperature of this chamber? 25 degrees Celsius, and the pressure is 100 kilopascals. Okay. So according to Boyle's law, which we've done, if I change the pressure, if I decrease the pressure, what happens to the volume? Increases. Right? Boyle's law. If I decrease the pressure, it can expand a bit more. Increased pressure, it has to squeeze up. Right? So, I'm decreasing the pressure, my volume should be bigger, that balloon should be bigger. Yes? What about the temperature? I've turned up the temperature in my chamber. What do you think the balloon's going to do now that the molecules are moving faster in there? The balloon should expand, expand as well. So, the volume is no longer 22.4, but it's now bigger. Okay? It's 24.8 liters no matter what gas it is. Dawson picked high, uh, nitrogen, but somebody else could have picked ammonia gas or methane gas or a mixture like I have in my balloon now. It would still occupy 24.8 liters if I had exactly one mole. Okay, so if I had half a mole, it would be 12.4 liters. You with me? And that is what Avogadro's Law is. That's the theory of Avogadro's law. No matter what gas, at those certain temperatures and pressures, occupy that volume. Now, why is it important? Well, uh, when the um, Canadian Army was first in Afghanistan, their Chinook helicopters would not fly. Couldn't fly. Because the temperature was a lot higher. And so let's just deal with temperature. Let's not even worry about the pressure. If the temperature is higher, the volume occupying one mole must be even bigger. So if I look at the same volume, I have less moles in that same volume. Do you understand? Does that make sense? And if I have less moles, I have less circles holding my helicopter in the air. So if I have less circles holding the helicopter in the air, what's going to happen to my helicopter eventually? No circles fall. And the helicopters weren't flying very well because of Avogadro's law. Does that make sense? So it does apply to more than just balloons. It applies to actual molecules that are holding things in the sky. It applies to weather balloons and satellites and all sorts of things that we try to push up into different pressures and different temperatures and how many molecules are in my one liter. Okay? So... Uh, this is 22, now I'm going to do some math. So that's the theory. Everybody okay with the theory? Done. Tick. Theory of Avogadro's Law. The math part is this. Well, if I have 22.4 liters of a, a balloon will be with that many liters in each mole, right? Uh, for one mole, I'll put. Can't I write 22.4 liters per mole? Does that make sense? That, going to that. Yes? And if I can, so therefore I can go 24.8 liters in, or for a mole. 
So 24.8 liters per mole. You okay with that so far? See how I got my units in a mole or per mole, same jazz. What can we do with our units? We can convert them into, like we did yesterday, formulas. Remember how we took our R and we showed how the units and the formula were the same? We're going to make a formula. What is L? Liters, right? What does liters represent? Volume. volume. What symbol do we give volume? V. v. This is a divide. There's a divide. Moles is? N. N. So volume divided by number of moles is equal to molar volume. That's what I'm going to call this. So I'm going to call this molar volume, and molar volume must be volume divided by moles. Are you okay with that? We have molar mass. Remember we have molar mass? Science 10, in our review, we had molar mass. What symbol did we give molar mass for, for like our, our letters? Capital M. So you know what? To make things really easy, I'm going to give this the symbol capital V. And I'm going to make that volume little v. And I'm going to rearrange this formula, times both sides by n, divide by big V, and I'm going to end up with number of moles is equal to little v divided by big V, where little v is volume and big V is molar volume. And actually, oh my gosh, is that not the same as our number of moles equals mass over molar mass formula? Right? So it's super easy for us to memorize because it's the same type of thing, volume over molar volume, mass over molar mass. You with me so far? And if it's at STP, then N equals volume divided by, what's the molar volume at STP? 22.4 liters per mole. So if it's at STP and I want my balloon to have two moles in it, I'd be 2 times 22.4, so 44.8 liters. Does that, right? Does that make sense? So let's go back to the balloon picture. If I wanted two liters in there, or two moles, I mean, in there, it'd be twice as big. So instead of 22.4, I'm going to have 44.8. Make sense? And that's just the formula that goes with that simple multiplication. So therefore, I can go 2.3 moles or something like that. And what if it's at SATP? Well, my number of moles is my volume divided by 24.8. So at SATP, if I wanted two moles in there, it would also be twice as big. Or half a mole, it would be half as big, 12.4. So we'll plug that into here, 0.5, multiply both sides by 24.8, and you will get 12.4 for your V. So I've just got now one, two formulas, and three if I really needed it, but actually we're just going to stick with these two. Two formulas that can help me figure out how many moles my balloon would be if it was this many volume big. Or, if it's this much volume big, how many moles are in that balloon? Do you see that? And it has to be different in STP and SATP. So yes, you do have to memorize these. But, I'll give you some little hints. First of all, it's the same thing as little v over big V. It's the same thing as little m over big M, which, pray God, you have actually memorized by now. These numbers sound complicated, but look. 2 times 2 equals 4. And 2 times 4 equals 8. Oh, that's not so scary anymore. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. And the smaller number, 2, 2, 4, goes with the smaller STP. And the bigger number, 2, 4, 8, goes with the bigger SATP. Okay, so it's actually not that scary to memorize. Yes? Is this on our test? Yes. You bet. It's the last thing we're doing for the gas unit, and it's going to play a big part in our very last unit of this course. 
Okay? So, let's answer this question over here. Let me just move the thing so the thing can see it. Thing being the iPad. Uh, how many moles is in a 0 0.80 liter balloon at SATP? So it's quite easy, you know, measuring length times width times height, not really because it's not a box, but anyway, of my balloon, and figuring out that it's 0.8 liters big. Okay, or I could fill it with 0.8 liters of water, not really, vapor, that's pretty hard to do. Anyway, erase what I just said. So my balloon is 0.8 liters big. See that? So it's like a normal size balloon. That's about 0.8 liters. Can you imagine it? And I'm going to put it at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals. So standard ambient temperature and pressure. How many moles have I got in there? How many circles have I got in there? Right. Well, number of moles equals volume over SATP. What is that? 2 times 4 is 8 liters per mole. And what's the volume, Nolan, of my balloon? Uh, According to the question? Uh, mm -hmm. Right, so 0 0.8 liters divided by 24.8 liters per mole. And tapity tap on your calculator. Ewan, what did you get? <coughs> 0 0.322. Did you? Yeah. Okay, 0 0.333? No. Three, two, two. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm like, I don't think that's the other class got. Yeah. 0 0.32 moles. How many significant digits do I have? One, two, one, two, three. So my answer can only have two in it. <laughs> so 0 0.32 moles. So I don't have six billion trillion circles. I have two billion trillion circles in my balloon. Do you get it? And it really is that straightforward. So there's two bits to today's lesson. One is the theory between what is Avogadro's law, the fact that we have to have two different numbers because the balloon would expand if it was hotter and less pressure. So that's the first concept of Avogadro, and it applies to every gas, no matter what the gas is. Okay, so that's the theory. And then the math. Plug it in, get an answer. Okay? Now, to help you with the math, I have this sheet for you to do.